Hey everybody, my name is Tiffany uh, and this is my friend Nauto. We work at Knifeware and today we're doing a thing. What are we doing Nauto? This is a tumbler sharpening system that has been around in the internet for several years now. Yeah. And we have got a lot of questions about this system and we finally got them. So we will give this a try and we'll give you a very fair opinion about this uh, sharpening system. I'm pretty stoked about it actually. We did that video a few months ago where we uh, tried out a bunch of other easier uh, sharpening mm. systems and uh, this one actually seems like it could be legit. I am not a professional sharpener. I don't know if you know this about me Nato, but I do sharpen a couple of knives, but I'm pretty beginner as far as my levels go. I'm not super good at it, but you are. So I have been working here for a couple of years and yeah. you know sharpened probably a couple thousand knives already. I do host the uh, you know sharpening videos as well mm -hmm. as a lot of the instructional videos. So I will give the more opinion from the professional perspective. My opinion will be from a very beginner sharpener perspective and uh, we'll see what's easier, I guess. I guess because we use whetstones mm -hmm. and more importantly, we sell whetstones, we're gonna try and give it an honest shot and balance out our opinions a bit. So we've seen some internet con comments on the Tumblr before and we just have to, you know, say that they've sort of let us believe that the Tumblr is roughly based off of a German um, sharpener called the Horl. Rollscheifer. Thank you. I was like, I couldn't remember the word. Uh, it's, it's an alleged relationship. Uh, we're not sure, you know, if that's true or whatever, but um, we're gonna we're gonna give Tumblr a, a roll. <laughs> so, all right, should we not unbox it? Yeah, it comes in a nice box. We'll give it open here. Oh, here, oh, there is a uh, instruction. Oh, great. Of uh, you know, says uh, getting started. It says even says the uh, sharp knives every day. Oh, that's a good, good thing to say. I like sharp knives. Looks pretty familiar. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, it's <laughs> like, um, I feel like I've seen drawings like these before. Yeah, like <laughs> uh, blue and the uh, yellow, you know, yeah. uh, the big company. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, uh, yeah, but, it comes with very nice um, comprehensive, I guess, illustration. Yeah. You know, tells you which side is which mm -hmm. and, you know, magnet sign here and angle and click yeah oh so it's got angles for both european and japanese knives and that's kind of nice yeah and so it's pretty simple okay and it, i'm sure it gives you a little bit more information when you scan the uh, qr code i think right but well i guess we should tell our friends of the internet that uh we each have two pre-dulled knives and i say pre-dulled i actually mean pre-dulled Um, yeah, these are pretty dull. There's nothing happening on, on either of these knives. And so we've got a pretty even place to start. Why don't you, why don't you, the first one to use sure. like the roll shifer? Well, no, sorry. The tumbler. Yeah, the tumbler shifer. Okay. There. Here. Okay. Use that. Okay, so. As I said, it does have 15 and 20 degrees, so I'm going to go 15, and I click that on there. Yep. Easy. Okay. Already. All right. Does it say how many times or anything? It doesn't. Probably when you scan the uh, QR code, it may give you a little bit more in-depth. We'll have a go. Sure. Give it a fair shot. What I learned is that we roll the tumbler back and forth until we get a burr. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's roll. All right. Okay, so I think off the hop, you wanna make sure that this, the block is right in the middle of the blade oh, yeah? because so it was kind of pushing it, pushing oh, it okay. off, yeah. And it says to use really light pressure. It should be uh, effortless mm -hmm. and it really is. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it's doing something. Um, it also sounds like it's m missing a part. Mm -hmm. Not quite, it's not bad. 
Like How many strokes have you done so far? Okay, and then the instructions say, so I did another eight and there's a burr there now. So it says to flip it over and then use the smooth side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 16. And then I guess I flip it around. Oh, you know what? It's easier if you pick it up and do the same thing again. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. So the knife should be sharp now, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought now to, that I was gonna be really uncomfortable with the blade side sitting mm -hmm. up, but like if you don't forget what you're doing, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So this testing paper arrived here on my table and it is, that is not a sharp knife. And maybe try the, uh, just the honing a few strokes and see. The instructions say that this is really effective and shouldn't take very long. So I've got quite a burr over there. I can see the light like reflecting off of the actual cutting edge and it's it's doing weird things i will be honest but when i get a knife like this on the cutting station i know it needs more than just a little honing and so i'll either try to touch up the edge on my own or yeah i don't know it it's kind of funny like i feel like i'm wearing down the diamond plate more than I am the knife steel. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that the tip is not gonna get sharp. Um, and I don't know if we can see that on camera, but as you get closer to the tip, uh, because of the natural shape of the knife, like it's not touching. Mm. Slow. You can see them better with the stainless steel part because I saw a big light in the gap at the top. Yeah. So you may be able to do that a little bit better. Like as I'm rolling this, the burr is folding over on this side of the blade. And so if I were to hone it, like it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to do it on this side mm -hmm. when it's, you want to remove the burr from the other side of the blade. Does that make yeah, sense? Absolutely. Okay, okay, so burr on so both sides. You wanna flip it and hone them. Flip first and then hone? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got the stainless steel side. And I'm gonna give that a couple of passes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna give it a couple of passes on this side. I'm gonna try my testing paper again. And there we go. It's rough. It's not, it's not amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I like to throw a little curve in there mm. just to see if the paper's tearing or if it's actually cutting in. It's a little of both in this case. Right. Tumblr sharpener recommends to hone the knife after you sharpen it with these right. with uh, their leather uh, strop. So, you know, we just got the leather strop here. So let's, let's give it a try and see right. if that edge improves it. Sure. I'm just gonna use the leather side too, the smooth side, because I the tumbler one doesn't have a suede side, so we're gonna go with the smooth one. And we'll see if that helps pull the burr off a little bit. All right, fresh paper. Ready? It's better. It's better after the strop. That's a loud knife though. This would not pass my yes. my shipping table <laughs> so that took me about six minutes i didn't get a very good edge off mm -hmm. of it um nauto has a lot more technical expertise than i do and so maybe you can get more out of this system maybe. than i could let's so yeah let's give it a try the um so oh and that took me about six minutes so me in six minutes and you in six minutes we'll see how we go absolutely now it's my turn i set it up so set the uh, blade up. Did you double check the instructions? I should. Step three, start sharpening. Diamond. Diamond. See, they, they roll. See, they roll. They oh roll. yeah, so they spin it down yeah. the... Note, make sure sharpening may take five to six minutes. 
Oh. 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 Just watch their instructional video on how to do this. Yeah. And they did mention the uh, at the tip they you may want to roll it a bit so that right, it okay. just goes along the edge bit easier. So you have to kind of. They also said that it would take a little longer. So I I did spend about what did I say six minutes on there. So I did use the right amount of time. It said the initial sharpen should take five to six minutes. It, it says it may take five to, you know, it depends oh, okay. on how. Not should, may. May. Because it, it did. depends on how, how. <laughs> I'm just going to do this side. Yeah. So I do like carve a little bit. Okay. This is how they instruct it though. After you raise the burr on the one side, they say to flip it and work the same side with the stainless steel three or four times. Hmm, okay. Two. I will flip that to the back. It is a little awkward. Yeah. It, it is, it is a little bit. Okay. Nato makes everything look a little bit mm. more technical than I do. I know like you're supposed to, like you don't supposed to put a lot of pressure. Right. But in order for the stone to actually be in touch with the uh, whole blade, mm -hmm. I do have to put a little bit of pressure like this way a bit. Right. Because otherwise it just like rolls like this and leaves. Right, like, that's what this, I was finding. This way it doesn't touch, yeah. right? So you have to roll and back, which makes it a little bit more technical. Yeah than the uh, just regular back and forth motion like this. Right. Because you can, you can hear, right? Yeah, totally. Where it like totally <sighs> leaves. Yeah. And it came back. You can certainly feel it too. And I mean, to be fair, like I didn't watch the video, but I did read the instructions. Okay, it does take It's funny too because it's a magnet, so like you can see the like little filings oh, yeah. sticking to the knife, yeah. A little bit more at the tip needs, because tip is a little bit harder because you have to push it yeah. so that the roller tumbler touches on the edge. Mm. But if you push it too hard, it can... Right, you can pull it right off lift, the magnet. Yeah. Or do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Alrighty, got the burr. What I'm gonna do, as I instructed on the video, mm. three or four strokes. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So that's their instruction. And I have a theory before actually cutting anything with this. Uh, I have theory right now, because the way that they explain um, the, um, it cuts a bit. Yours is better. But there is a big burr left on the ones. There's a big burr left on the one side. Let's, you know, let's use the leather strap. See if you can, oh yeah. It, um, you can feel it, hey? It drags, <laughs> it's yeah. like. What I would suggest like you to do is probably flip the knife and just at least do the one stroke with the stainless like this. It breaks right. off the burr. Right. Whether it, they, they weren't really clear on the instructional video or the instruction that's attached. Right, like what the, the purpose of yeah, breaking like, the burr yeah, or the honing, stropping. I guess. It's still, it's really rough, but, um, and the tip, it does okay. But it's pretty rough. Yeah, right. And there are some drags and catches. Also took me about six minutes to get to that point. Um, let's do the comparison to the uh, whetstones. I've just pulled this uh, whetstone out of the water. This is yep. a 220 stone. Um, again, because I'm not like 
in my own kitchen, doing my own knife, uh, I'm, I'm using the, the Tojiro clip, the to Togi grip, I think it's mm -hmm. called. Mm -hmm. um, so this is gonna maintain my angle better than what I can freehand. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the 220 whetstone uh, and then I think I'm gonna go to a 1000 mm -hmm. um, and we'll see if I can do any better than what the tumbler did. We're off to the races. So, uh, whetstones seem intimidating to people. And granted, it is a little bit more work, but I love this thing. This plastic clip is the best. As I say, I do do my own knives at home. Thank you. Well, I don't have somebody who's pouring water on my stone at home all the time, but you know, it helps. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little burr. But I'm gonna keep going because it doesn't feel like it's quite done yet. This is gonna be so embarrassing in five minutes when Nato starts sharpening. Like, it's gonna take me a long time and I'm gonna second guess myself 8,000 times. But uh, luckily we are not in a competition. We're just trying to sharpen a knife here. Mm -hmm. When I first start, started getting asked to do these sharpening videos with you, I was really freaked out if mm -hmm. I'm gonna be completely honest because I know that you're really great at this and I know that I'm very beginner at it. But anybody can sharpen a knife. And you know, if you have the right tools, mm -hmm. and I think that's a part of what's really cool about doing these videos is, yeah. um, I'm gonna start on the other side, is that it's given me a ton of confidence as far as, as far as this stuff goes. And, and I think I could do it. I think I could do it on my own. I think I'm ready for the 1000. Awesome. So that's cool. And I'm gonna do the hard side first this time. Really slow, maintaining my angle. No way, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> but check this out. Look at how proud of me I am. <laughs> Feels a lot better as well. Like it's not as um, choppy. It's not, it's not dragging as much. No, as not the, at all. Yeah. Can I borrow the, the strap? Yes. Comparing different methods. So I'm using different <laughs> methods. I'm gonna use both sides. I'm excited. That's in about the same amount of time for me. I got a much better edge off of this knife. Do you want to do you want to sure. check my work? Yeah, he got a much keener edge in his 25 seconds than I did in my 6 minutes, but I mean, you made a knife super sharp in the same amount of time it takes a tumbler to make a knife not very sharp, so you did pretty That's much true. Mm -hmm. In order for you to be able to tell there's a little burr left and mm. stuff, that's a little bit, you know, like... Right, yeah. But it's it's great. That, that thing worked pretty good. We moved, you know, keep the same angle yeah. pretty easy and... Yeah. Here we are. We sharpen two knives each with the tumbler sharpener as well as the... Uh, using regular our method, mm -hmm. the, um, whetstone. Yep. <laughs> now it's a moment of truth. I guess we're gonna test them on the newspaper or the 
papers, as well as, you know, ultimately these are kitchen knives. So we need to actually test them on the floor. Yeah. So, and we're going to wrap up some, you know, thoughts about it, right? So. So that's the uh, that's a roller. That guy? It is yeah. like really rough with this yeah. and uh, regular. You know, one, even one thousand grit edge is much smoother. You can actually feel them. And, uh, hopefully, you can catch by the uh, microphone. I don't know if you can. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but. but let's let's try this. Okay. So that was the uh, that was a tumbler sharpener here. Smoother basically means it has not only has the less toothiness, but it's more consistent. Mm, right. Seems like the uh, with the tumbler sharpener, it has got like roughness and a bit of a smoothness, kind of in both world, like both right. times on the uh, different. Like parts I can of feel a little serration almost. Exactly. Yeah. To be fair, I'm going to cut this right in half first. So the half will be used to test the other, other mm -hmm. knife. Okay, so this is the knife that's been sharpened by the... Um, tumbler? Tumbler. Oh. Okay. So, what do you think, Tiff? Well... I mean, on the tomato, it's actually kind of nice because it does grab the skin. Um, I can get it pretty thin, but like that time I just got a, a seed and it bounced right off. Like instead of cutting through, like I think it kind of pushed it. It's not, it's not the worst tomato knife I've ever used. What do you think, Naoto? Well, look at you. You're just like so testing. <laughs> What I'm feeling is I think I have my theory before I actually get into the test. Because yeah. the, um, we, I think, both struggle to sharpen the tip part. It's not the design error, but you are kind of forced to roll your roller tumbler sharpener along the edge. And mm -hmm. you can't put the same amount of pressure as the, uh, right. as the, uh, the belly of the knife. So what I'm seeing is that the, this part like the where it attaches to the magnet yeah it does very well like it just cuts yeah off. i found that too when i'm trying the same spot it it struggles yeah like mine won't go through the skin quite there the until. same and it can be probably improved by the you know um repetitiveness i guess like if mm -hmm. you do it over right. and over and learn how to use the uh, tumbler sharp yeah it may be better but it's not a, as easy as they advertise that right like, i'm gonna try that on the knife with the uh the finish with the stone here right i'm just gonna flip my tomato so it's the around same thing yeah the, i can i mean like i oh and control it better so it cuts all the parts that's pretty <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not disappointed in the job that I did on the whetstone for getting through the skin. Like, I'm consistently getting through on each spot of the knife. Like, it's toothy enough that I can get through the skin of the knife, but it's smooth enough that, like, oh, look at you. I've never yeah. tried that before with any of my knives. That's and now I don't think I have enough tomato on the board. Whoa. No. <laughs> so you can definitely make it a little bit smoother. You can control yeah. it all the way. Like where you were sharpening, uh, you can definitely control it a little bit better. I mean, it takes some time, I guess. And once you get the, the you know, hang of your wrist, mm -hmm. you should be able to, you know, take that training wheel off eventually yeah. and start doing by your own thing. So carrots, um, good thing about carrots is that the, you'll be able to tell the thickness of the knife, mm -hmm. which you couldn't really control on either way, either method that we did today. Because mm. the oftentimes when the knife start to become very thick, we will thin this whole bevel mm. with the whetstones. And that, right. 
Western so, has so much more advantage. Right. Because you can just, you know, thin it and control it, sharpen the whole bevel. Right, and then you can like polish the bevel yeah, exactly. and make it look all nice and new. Where and stuff too. Um, just touch sharpening on along the edge doesn't really tell you much except except how toothy the knife, toothy the edge is. Mm. So I'm just gonna cut medallions few medallions here, three medallions each. Then what I'm going to test, this is how I kind of test the toothiness of the edge. I stack those three medallions and try to make a julienne, which is not the conventional method of julienning, but I'll do this. If it bites, same kind of force, how much it bites into it, how much it actually goes down by simply pushing it forward. So this one here is one with the uh, tumbler sharpener. Yeah. You can tell really the uh, that tumbler sharpener that uh, gives you such like rough uh, bitey edge. Sometimes it releases a little too much moisture often the uh, you know you have to find the right balance I guess right the um, I think that for these 1000 edge will give you a little bit better uh, both better good of both worlds like nice bite mm -hmm. but at the same time it slides it's nice. so smooth yeah the, like I uh, found that I was able to get much thinner juliennes off of the 1000 and yeah almost it yeah like I can tell this edge, um, it stops right at the cutting board. Yeah. Where this- But this one will continue slide. slide. Yeah. Honestly, like there are things that I really liked about the tumbler. It was really easy to use. The setup obviously was super simple. You know, there was a little bit of dust and steel filings here and there, but it was, it was okay. Um, I did like the, confidence that it gave you to know that I like the confidence it gave you to know the angle that you're sharpening on but it's it seems very uh, height centric like if you are sharpening a santoku that makes sense but anything taller you're gonna run into a little bit of difficulty what I didn't like was that flipping the knife was a little awkward and did feel kind of dangerous uh, with the blade sitting up like that Sometimes it lifted and you're tempted to just push it back down into place and like you could cut yourself really terribly on that and and I could see how that could happen. When I compare that to the ease of use of the whetstone, the whetstone there was some water involved and you know when I'm at home I don't have somebody <laughs> shooting water onto my stone, but I am right next to the sink so that so that helps. Uh, there are a couple of things that I use at home to keep it clean. I do, excuse me, I don't have a sink bridge, but I do have a microfiber cloth that I just put on the counter and use. And the, the togi grip or toe grip, I gotta read the box. Uh, <laughs> this Tojiro thing is awesome. I've used it a bunch of times now. It really locks in the angle. It makes me feel more confident about the angle than what the tumbler did. Um, and so as far as training wheels go, like I prefer this one to this one. And I got a much better edge off of the whetstones than I did off of the tumbler. And then if I'm to stay category to category, I guess my concluding thought on ease of use is that I found it easier to sharpen with the whetstones. If you have dexterity problems, which I don't, I still think the wind goes to the whetstones, especially if you get one of these guys because you're just pushing instead of like holding the brick and rolling the thing in a weird curve mm -hmm. to make sure you get your whole knife mm -hmm. sharp. Mm -hmm. Time-wise, I used six minutes on both systems. Um, I think that I could have used a little bit more time to get a, a closer edge to yours. <laughs> But I think I got a pretty serviceable edge off of did six I, did minutes. Did I rush you? When I start sharpening, like right next to you, did I rush you? Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, no, <laughs> I don't think so because I really wanted to have it right. <laughs>
And so I slowed down if anything <laughs> else. I was like, oh no, now Toe's doing it. <laughs> I guess all in all, uh, the wind goes to the whetstones again. If you are a beginner beginner um, and you want to get it right and you're starting to use whetstones, probably it's going to take you about an hour. It did for me on my first one. Um, and you know, watching the videos and reading the instructions are really, really important. Watch the videos, uh, which is the step I sometimes skip. And in all things that you're learning, if you skip a step, you're just gonna start at the beginning again. So it saves you a lot of time if you just read the instructions, Tiffany. So the, um, the final results on both knives that we sharpen it with the uh, tumbler sharpener and the whetstones Definitely there is a limitation for those tumbler sharpeners to get the get to the certain point because there is only one grit and this mm. grit, the diamond grit, seems to be pretty coarse. So the final edge you're getting is really really coarse where even our basic 1000 grit stone we often, for the Japanese knives, sharpen at a little bit of finer grits like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 grit. You can get, like, even with the basic 1,000 grit, basic 1,000 grit finish will give so much smoother than this diamond stone did. Um, also, what I found is that the uh, this honing pad isn't really doing much mm -hmm. when it comes to how it's supposed to hone or take the burr off. Right. Um, I've observed that the um, there are a lot of scratches that's actually been made on this pa part that tells me that this is not as quite hard as the those knife steels that we actually used. May work for the other softer steels, but this is not probably doing much on the really hard knives. Right. Also, there's always a limitation that the, this Tumbler sharpener only works just the edge of the knife. What that means is that they sharpen about a millimeter off from the edge, but it's not going to thin your knife. Thinning a knife is pretty important because the, when you're trying to cut the potato, carrots, yams, the thickness is going to like break the food that you're cutting. So you want to thin and maintain the thickness of your knife where the tumbler sharpener won't do as much. Right. I want to emphasize that the uh, part that you talked about though, how tall the knife is, it has always has limitation of what kind of knife it can be comfortably sharpened. Right. And this, the I guess a knife, short knife is going to be a problem too. 20 degrees and it, you have to lift the knife up a little bit. Right. So that edge is actually above the block or, or something like this. Nakiri, that's too tall. So right. you have to have the roller somewhere that's higher. Right. To do this stuff. Hmm. There's a way around, but it's not necessarily most convenient right. way. Right, whereas on a whetstone, it doesn't actually matter how tall or short and the knife is, the angle is still the same. Exactly. So. That makes sense. And that actually has the uh, Polo knives and uh, the skinnier knife side. Right, so. it's got both sides, yeah, exactly so. so that's, I love this thing. Cost, like this whole set will cost 130 US. Right. And if you're gonna add their leather strop, that's 160 US. That's right. about like 220 Canadian dollars. Right. For 130 Canadian dollars, you can get three stones, right. 220, 1000, and a chewing stone, chewing stone. And that was all I used, really. Mm -hmm. and, and then it, the straw? Yeah, straw, if you add to it, that'll be a 200 Canadian. Sweet. You could do something like this. The double-sided stone, 200, 1,000. Yeah. And the chewing stone, $85. These stones are great if you're just gonna, you know, try out or casually sharpen your knives at home. These stones gonna do a really, really great job at home. And uh, how much is my favorite set of training wheels? It's 17 bucks. And so if you need the set of training wheels and you know the extra set of confidence for <laughs> guiding here. <your. laughs> I was like, those stones, any of the, the stones 
won't last you a very long time. We'll give you more flexibility on what you could do uh, with those stones, like thinning, if you want to actually get into more advanced sharpening, like right. thinning and polishing and stuff like that, you could still use those stones. Right. So definitely these have more versatility. Right, and you can use any knife too, oh, yes. right? Like, I don't know, a paring knife or a giant cleaver. They're all the same to a whetstone. Right. So yeah, if you wanna learn how to use those whetstones, check out the videos here.